Welcome to The Expositor Podcast with Dr. Stephen J. Lawson. Dr. Lawson is the founder and president of One Passion Ministries. The Expositor Podcast is focused on taking your preaching to the next level. Now, here's Dr. Lawson. I want to talk to you in this session about why study the preaching of the Reformation. When I think of the Reformation, I think of Martin Luther, John Calvin, um, William Tyndale, John Knox. Um, I think of the martyrs under Bloody Mary, Nicholas Ridley, um, Hugh Latimer, uh, John Rogers, Thomas Cranmer. It's important for us to note that every one of these reformers, they were preachers of the Word of God. They were first and foremost preachers. The only exception to that would be Tyndale, uh, who gave us the English Bible. But it is important for us to understand that first and foremost, these men were preachers. Every other ministry was secondary or of a peripheral nature. What was the hub of the wheel? What was the cornerstone? What was the rudder of the ship? What was primary for them? was the preaching of the Word of God. And that should speak volumes to us today. Because if we're to see another Reformation, what we need are men who are first and foremost preachers of the Word of God, who are lit up by the Scripture, who are empowered by the Spirit of God to preach. That's what these Reformers were. And they were men who worked hard at preaching. None of them lived an easy life. Uh, several of them were martyred at the stake. Uh, these were men who did the work of 10 men, 20 men. Uh, they had an extraordinary capacity to be productive. But all of these other things were not allowed to displace the centrality of the ministry of preaching um, in the days of the 16th century. It was by the preaching of the Word of God that they mobilized and, and moved those who were under the influence of their preaching. Um, as you study the Reformation, we see that these great men were not simply theologians and, and Bible translators and men who, let's say, lived in the back of a library or who were in an ivory tower disconnected from the everyday life of people. No, instead, these were men who, who stood in pulpits and preached to common people, ordinary people, everyday people from all different walks of life. Uh, they were not removed from the flow of the issues that people were facing, uh, the farmer, the blacksmith, the housewife. Uh, these were men who knew how to relate the Word of God to where people lived and where they were. It's important for us to study the Reformation, to see the kind of preaching that took place during this time. I, I must tell you, when I thought of John Calvin, I thought of simply a commentator and a, a weighty theologian. But after reading his sermons on Galatians and Ephesians and Micah, I, I have been greatly challenged at how accessible Calvin was in the pulpit. Uh, he, he rarely, if ever, even used the original languages in the pulpit. He was putting the cookies on the bottom shelf. Um, he was not hard to follow. There was a natural uh, progression of thought and delivery that Calvin used in his preaching. And that speaks volumes to me today, to not be speaking over the heads of people. And Martin Luther said he had some 40 doctors and lawyers and physicians in his congregation. And he said, essentially, I don't even preach to them much. He said, I preach to the maidens and to the school teachers and to the, to the people from everyday life. That speaks to me that as I minister the Word of God, and it should speak to you, that we are those people not only who interpret the Bible plainly, but we also speak the Bible plainly so that we are easily understood. They were men who preached through books in the Bible sequentially, verse by verse. They were men who brought 
um, theological uh, precision to the pulpit. Uh, they were men who preached the gospel and urged their listeners to commit their life to Christ. Uh, they showed the relevance of the text as they preached. Uh, so many of these things that are timeless, that are used by effective preachers in every generation in every place. And the last thing that I would draw to your attention is the sacrifice they made, the willingness on their part to preach even in the face of danger. I, I would encourage you to familiarize yourself with the English reformers and the extraordinary price they, they paid under Mary I, who was known as Bloody Mary. There's a reason why they called her Bloody Mary, because she put to death some 300 uh, Protestants during her reign of terror, beginning in 1555, concluding in 1558. Another hundred died in prison before they could even get to the martyr stake uh, due to the mistreatment they suffered while they were in prison. Yet these preachers would not recant. They would not change their doctrine. They would not back down from what their convictions told them was true. And so as I study the preachers of the Reformation, uh, I am reminded of the courage and the fearlessness and the boldness that God requires of me even as I preach today. I would urge you to study the preachers of the Reformation and you will be greatly helped in your own personal ministry. You will be inspired. You will be motivated. Uh, it will elevate your game to the next level as you preach the Word of God. Study the Reformers in their preaching. God bless you.